Hello friends, welcome to UK Dreamers. This is Aman and welcome to today's session where we would be discussing about the MRCP part one, how to prepare, how to ace this exam and to share this valuable information. I have a very special guest today again. Uh, I welcome Dr. Sajid Abdul, uh, who is a specialty registrar in acute medicine. He is ST6. Uh, he's also associate tutor with the Royal College of Physicians. So he's the perfect person for us to let know you how hard the exam is, how to prepare, how to crack it, basically. So, uh, Dr. Abdul, I heartily welcome you to the channel. Well, thank you very much, Aman. Thank you very much, uh, you know, uh, for organizing the session with me. Um, thank you, I'm It's glad. a pleasure yes. to have you. It's same here. Okay, boss. So, guys, uh, since I myself am preparing for my MRCP1, so, you know, I don't have any edge here. So, I'll hand it over to Dr. Sajid Abdul, who would discuss this and maybe, you know, we all would learn something from this presentation. Over to you, Sajid, boss. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amman. Yeah. Um, so, everyone, as we know, uh, uh, in UK, um, to to prospect further in your career after the graduation, if you want to go into medicine part, then you have to have MRCP. Um, this, this has three parts, part one and part two are mainly written and the basis is the um, clinical examination. So you, have, you need to have these three parts to have this MRCP degree to further progress in your career as a registrar and then a consultant. So uh, my aim today is mainly to focus on part one exam, what it is, uh, what is part one exam, what it involves, you know, how can we prepare, and you know, um, what is the exam about, how was the fees, and in general, um, and my aim is mainly to focus on how best we can do um, and pass the exam in the first attempt. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So, I mean, this information, everything is in on the MRCP, you know, uh, web page. Um, but as we know, it's a full day exam. Um, each, um, it has two papers, you know, paper one, paper two, each is about three hours. It can be given online and also um, at, the, at the center. Um, each exam, like each paper um, is three hours with a one hour break and each paper is 100 MCQs. So in total, there are, you know, 100%, 100, 200 MCQs overall in the exam. Okay, um, next slide, please. So as you know, um, the dates, um, you know, it's four times in a year. It is called as a, something called as a diet, D-I-E-T. So this year it was in La finished in February and May, and the next session is in August, followed by November. The fees for um, candidates who want to give the exam in the UK is £448. And the fees for um, uh, doctors who are, who are outside the UK, it is 608 pounds. So it is quite variable. And, uh, you know, the, by the time you think about giving the exam, which is already, you know, like every three months is the exam. So, you know, you need to make your decision and just go for it. Uh, next slide, please. So I would like to stress more about how the exam is scored. So all these is, as I said earlier, uh, you can see this information on the uh, MRCP web page. I would say when, whenever you start preparing, you know, make a note of these um, uh, specialty and the marks, how much, how many marks each specialty has. As you can see, 14 is the standard and the major, major, major specialties like everybody's interested, cardiology, endocrines, gastro, neuro, infectious disease, renal, respiratory, rheumatology, all this score around 14. So, what it means is at least 14 to 15 questions will be given from these um, um, specialties in the exam out of 200. Um, and hematology is 10 and psychiatry is nine. So um, everybody, unfortunately, what I've seen over the years is they concentrate only on this. I wouldn't say not to concentrate, but again, there's other parts also, which I would like to you know, focus about. Can you go ahead and next slide, please? So this slide for me, um, I would say we need to give more importance, clinical sciences, pharmacology and therapeutics, 
25 and 15. So it is 40 marks. So out of the 200 marks, 40 marks are from, from only this area. Other parts, geriatrics, dermatology, oncology, eye and palliative are like eight and four, but very, very important. Um, so if you say this costs around at least 60 marks, but um, I saw a few of my junior colleagues um, who hasn't, you know, um, looked at these uh, these topics in um, when from these um, areas, um, uh, you know, they had to unfortunately, you know, um, you know, um, keep on redoing the exam. So my 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 aim is uh, my aim and my my advice is for people apart from the normal specialities, please focus on the clinical sciences, pharmacology, therapeutics, uh, because. Out of the 40 marks, even if you get 25, it will be very, very, it, it makes a lot of difference between pass and fail. Okay. Uh, and apart from the clinic, only clinical sciences, if you can see, like immunology, four marks, statistics, five marks. So statistics, it's easy when you solve. It is very hard if you don't read at all because it is about mathematics. So you need to know the formulas. So the common thing is, for example, the table, contingency table like two by two table, where you have a lot of formulas, um, uh, specificity, sensitivity, true positive value, true negative value, you know, likelihood ratios, all these things. If you read it, you'll, it will be easier. Like genetics, see three marks, immunology, four marks. All these things are like two or three marks, but these, what I mean to say is these, we have read it in our year one and year two of our graduation. And, we might know, okay, this, this could be, this could be, but again, if you don't read it, if you don't stress on these things, then um, your, your chances of uh, you know, um, scoring uh, or the pass mark would be very, very low. So I would say, please concentrate also on these topics. Uh, next slide, please. Resources, coming to resources. There's always a confusion, what to read, what to read. There's a lot of material. Everywhere you, you Google it, there's a lot of material. But the standard is Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine. Even though it's a book, is very small, but each and every line is important. Pa part one by Philip Kalra. Um, my advice is to mainly read the you know um, basic sciences from Philip Kalra, but don't go into deal with the specialties. Specialties, everything you get in the Oxford Handbook. And what are the MCQs? You can take one at least, past medicine, past it on examination. But again, like for example, past medicine has around 4,000 MCQs, past it has around 7,000. So it's in the same way on examination also has like four to 5,000. So I would say take one um, MCQs, um, you know, um, uh, what I say, uh, subscribe one MCQ for any anything past medicine or past test, but past test is on the top list followed by examining on examination of past medicine. Um, but don't, um, you know, I would say, um, uh, don't feel bad that, okay, I did not go, go, I did not subscribe past test, I did not subscribe past medicine. I would say, just go with one, one subscription, okay, master it, and that's it. Just keep on practicing. There are a lot of resources, a lot of resources. If you open YouTube, there's a lot of resources. Um, but at the end of the day, before the exam, what you need is, after, apart from the patient, is revision. So you need to think about, you know, what, what can I revise before the exam? That is very, very important. So my uh, advice is stick with the Oxford Handbook, Basic Sciences from Pelicara, and any one MCQ uh, source. Again, um, and you know, just make a notes for yourself. You know uh, what to revise. If you if you are unable to score anything properly, just keep on revising. It will be very very easy. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Again, as I said, how to prepare? Right? You know, shall I just shall I just read the theory first? People will ask. Or uh, once I read the theory, then I'll go to MCQs. Um, I would say, you know. Because uh, this exam, um, if 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 you're giving for the first time, I would say just subscribe for an MCQ bank, start it, start with the system, see how the questions are, uh, um, you know, structured. What are they asking? 
you know, how they are asking. Then read the same topic in the theory. So, you know, initial few days for a week or so, it will be very, you'll be very, very slow. But as you go on, you will understand uh, what exactly is the exam about and how to prepare. So you, you will know by yourself. There's no, as I said, there's no right or perfect way to prepare. Everybody has their own preparation. You know, um, like you can see uh, people telling, okay, top tips for preparation, top tips for this, that. But again, at the end of the day, it's about up to the individual how they prepare. So I would say practice MCQs multiple times. The reason I say is multiple times is not about only scoring. My aim is mainly to see how um, well I am reading. Each time you read the question, think about it. Whatever is given in the question is important. Don't think that this is not given, this is not given. So the, the way the MCQs are structured is um, they just, each and every line is important. That's it, I would say. Read theory again and again, as I said, don't go deep, it, but again, if you're, you know, if you're getting wrong in those sections, just keep keep on read, read the theory. Just, just, you know, have a glimpse of it. I had a glance, you know, just to see, okay, where I'm failing, why I'm failing, then it will be very, very easy. Remember the themes. Themes in the sense like, um, for example, complications of MI, okay, very, very common topic. What are the complications of MI? Write it down. What are the day, like, for example, you know, people are having person after MI having persistent ST elevation. The common example, the complication is LV aneurysm. So what it could be. So, you know, things like that uh, in and out, in and out, because they will not ask a direct question. Sometimes they can ask direct question, but sometimes they are, you know, beat around the bush. So remember the themes. Um, next slide, please. So this is my you know, approach, like few few things, as I said before. Um, write down, you know, on you know, on your in a book or a table or just to your wall, how many marks are there for each particular specialty. As you can see, all major systems, like eight to ten systems, they are scoring 14 marks, 14 to 15 marks. Okay, make at least 20 topics in a system. Um, this was what I was doing when I was doing my part one. So what, what I mean by that is, for example, um, take the system of cardiology, okay? So in cardiology, we'll say, what is STEMI? What is NSTEMI? Um, read about pericarditis, what about um, iotic stenosis? What about mitral valve? Um, what about, um, you know, AF? Um, read about uh, winky back phenomena, um, read about QT syndrome, read about, you know, Brugada syndrome, all these, like, make, make a note on the end, like, you know, all the 20 topics and what are, what could be the to common uh, questions or themes around those topics. So 20 topics in a system. So as you go on, it will be very, very easy if, if you at least master those topics. Because um, at the end of the day, for example, in cardiology, um, cardiology, respiratory, gastro. Many people I have seen, like, they will score very high, like 10 marks out of 15 or 10 to 12. But again, uh, you need to give importance to each and every speciality. Because as you can see, whatever it, this exam is about, whatever marks they have set, it's set like that. So no speciality. For example, cardiology, they can't give 20 or 30 questions. Okay. Or a hematology, can, they can give 15, 20 questions. No. So if you, it could be related, but again, as you can see, like psychiatry nine, hematology 10, um, basic sciences 25. So it will ask 25. So it's that is huge. Um, you read each and every line carefully the theory. So the other day, like when I was doing um, MCQs with my colleagues, uh, there was a question about how do you differentiate between pre-renal failure and acute renal failure? In that, one of the um, option was urine is free of red cell class. So my colleague, um, one of my colleagues said that, okay, he, he, was, uh, he did not read it carefully, the question, but he went, but that is why he got the answer wrong. So in answers also, always read about, is it, what, what it is, um, what is the option given, okay? For example, the other day, 
when I was doing sessions about paracetamol poisoning. It is about glutathione. It is about the toxic metabolite. Um, are these are they high or low? So we need to know these things. So always keep it carefully read what you're um, reading. Read the question with understanding. Um, and what is the question asking? Is it asking the most likely cause, the least likely cause? What could be the next pro you know, plan of management or, you know, or what could not be um, one of those th things? For example, um, people who take cannabis, they can have hypothermia, they can have rhabdomyolysis, um, you know, uh, they can have uh, 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 me metabolic acidosis, but not metabolic alkalosis. So these things, what it is asking. So the way the questions are framed is, is always tricky. I always see that after the five options, we will be good at taking the two out. Then in the three by Hickok, we will take one out. When we are stuck in between two, two choices, we are always wrong. That is where our thinking, our practice, our understanding comes into place. Okay. So no matter, few people say, okay, practice 50 questions, practice 100 questions every day. It is not about how many numbers you're practicing. It is about, if, for example, if you prepare, if you practice only 10 questions, the choices are like they, every question has four to five choices. So you're practicing what I think is around 40 questions. Even if you're practicing 10 questions, because of the choices, like there are four or five choices, why the choice is there? The choice, whatever they give is, is more or less related to the topic. So what I mean to say is try to read the explanations. When, when, once you, even if you get the answer right, Try to read the explanation why other options are wrong. That is the way you have to tease this exam. Okay, getting the answer is is not the not you, you might get the answer when you're practicing, but it couldn't while you're practicing, you might be a bit lenient and just say, okay, this is yes and go on. But in real exam, we can't do that because we can't take the risk. So at that time we always stop in case of real exam and we say okay could it be this could it be this could it be this when you think about when you always stuck between two or three options that, that that is always wrong so what i'm my idea is to just practice 10 15 20 questions every day but practice and also read the explanation about why the other choices are not appropriate for the answer okay Make your own short notes, you, you know, mnemonics, whatever. It's up to you how, how you want to, you know, uh, remember th those topics, those answers, you know. Uh, for example, you know, hypercalcemia can cause short QT interval, okay. Hypocalcemia can cause long QT interval. So how you remember, it's up to you. You know, some people like to know the reason about, you know, reader pathophysiology and things like that, fine. Some people want to just remember, okay, high calcium, you know, short QT, low calcium, long QT. So whatever the way, make your notes so that you know what to do, okay? Uh, next slide, please. So this I said, you know, earlier, you know, just practice like 15, 25, half an hour a day, 10, you know, once you practice, see, give yourself understanding of why I did, did this wrong, why I thought this is correct. Then that is the way how you improve yourself. That's it. Um, don't rush once you know the answer. What I mean to say is the same thing. Why the other options are wrong. That is very important because if you see the themes are the same, 200 questions, themes are more or less the same. More maybe ten or ten questions might be some somewhat totally different. Like for example, in basic sciences, they might put something new which we don't know at all, or research-wise or whatever. They are those are all questions that want to test for further exams. But most of the questions, one ninety for example, all the themes we know, all the themes have been we we have come across. Um, so I would my suggestion is. Understand the theme, understand the theme. For example, 
common themes acute intermittent porphyria porphyria cutane turn all these are common to topics new fibromatosis um you know tuberous sclerosis sometimes what you have to do is read three to four topics in common how to differentiate and that is very very important common thing when for example when it comes to eye medical ophthalmology we always confuse painless loss of vision painful loss of vision okay these all those things whenever you read it you can make the difference um in the end i said spend 3 hours at least for free session not exactly 3 hours but at least 2 hours because you want to concentrate on the exam you know um uh, some people you know finish it very fastly like 2 and 1/2 hours they can finish it uh, some people take 3 hours some people take 2 hours but again what i mean to say by here spend 3 hours at least for few sessions where you can concentrate like the exam atmosphere a uh, few weeks before the actual exam so you can do this like for example start with 50 questions or once you are prepared a bit more then gradually increase 50 75 then 100 this is mainly to see that okay i can sit at a time concentrate at least you need to have good concentration during the exam at least for 2 hours 2 to 2 and a half hours because it's difficult you know even um, for example in the real exam if if you say we are stuck if you don't know the answer then the next question um uh or oh, um, we we think that okay we can answer it later on and the next question be will be even though you know the answer you will not be confident you will not be confident you will not confident. what i mean to say is you know as i said earlier it is difficult to say what is right or what is wrong how to prepare um once you it's always like okay oh i should have read this oh so i should have read this i should have revised this before coming um this should not be there because once the exam is done it's done okay either you pass or you have to reset that's the only thing the good thing about this exam is there is no that you know don't need to get the top marks um the percentage they say around 58% 58% or 55 56% but what i would say should aim for more than 65% to be to be on the safer side that you just you know at least pass this exam and prepare for part 2 because it's um, you think okay the next time i will study next time i will study but again the more attempts you keep on giving the more um, you will you will have less confidence as you go on so i would say you know, sit for one time practice 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 prepare and write it down because for part 2 also the themes are more or less the same but it's quite extensive in part 2 so part one whatever you notes you make make sure that you um keep in a safer place so that you can read for part two okay so i do these sessions for my uh, colleagues in my fellow hospital uh, in my own in the hospital where i'm working on a weekly basis um sometimes twice weekly due to the term permit time permits um but uh, any suggestions um you know from the audience uh, you know um i would like to know the comments so that you know this is a, everything is about improvement how do we improve ourselves in terms of you know guiding others um to us you know passing the exam mm, i would say thank you i think i've spoken a lot but yeah thank you thank you so much sajid boss so guys and girls if you are planning to write mrcp part 1 what i would suggest is drop your email in the comments below uh, as sajid boss said that he is taking some classes which i am also attending and guys uh, it, it's dr sajid's good will he is not charging us any money for this he he all he means is for us to study to spread the knowledge and everything so if you want guys if you want the classes for the mrcp part 1 as dr sajid said just drop your email in the comments below 
uh, most likely if you're planning for the November attempt, uh, once Dr. Sajid, uh, you know, plans something up in the month of August, September, something like this, we all can sit, we all can study together, prosper together. And that's the message I wanted to give to this video. Thank you so much, Sajid Boss. Uh, so guys, as I said, just make sure you give your emails in the comment below. Thank you so much. If you need any further information, just go to the website or email me or you can also email Dr. Sajid. I will leave his uh, you know, email ID as you can see below. And yes, we will do something great together. Thank you so much, Dr. Sajid. And we'll thank see you, you Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.